home to the ancient Charua people, the second smallest country in South America and the biggest consumer of beef in the entire world, welcome to Uruguay. Let's its history, geography, culture, and more. Prior to the arrival of the Europeans, the area of what is now Uruguay was inhabited by the Charua and Guarani people who arrived there approximately 4,000 years ago. They were mostly hunter-gatherers and some labored in fishing. This indigenous population never numbered more than 20,000 people, and by the start of Uruguayan independence, they virtually ceased to exist due to European diseases and constant warfare. The arrival of the Europeans in the 1500s marked a slow decline of the local indigenous population. Juan Díaz de Solís discovered the territory in 1516. They were, as were a lot of other explorers in South America during that time, seeking precious metals in the mountains and hills. Sebastian Cabot led another expedition after the death of the former and found the area unsuitable for settlement until the 1620s, when Jesuit and Franciscan missions were established in the area. The Banda Oriental slowly formed during this period, becoming officially administered under the Viceroyalty of Peru from 1542 to 1776. Another thing to note during this time was the surplus of cattle and horses that were introduced to the area in 1603. The Portuguese established a settlement called Colonia da Sacramento on the opposite bank from Buenos Aires in 1680. The Spanish sought to limit the expansion of Portugal in Brazil. And so, in 1726, the Spanish established a settlement in the northern bank of the La Plata River, which would eventually become the capital of the country of Uruguay, San Felipe de Montevideo. The 1800s in South Americas was marked by revolution after revolution. One particular event, the May Revolution of 1810 in Buenos Aires, would coincide with the formation of the foundation of Uruguayan independence. The United Provinces of the Rio de la Plata was established after this particular revolution, inspiring others to rise up in rebellion. One particular individual, Jose Carvacio Artigas would rally the local population to take up arms against Spanish rule. They issued the proclamation of the 26th of February, 1811. This was basically a call to war against Spain. He would be known in modern times as a national hero of Uruguay. The Uruguayans continued to resist both Argentine and Brazilian occupation in the early 1800s. In 1828, a treaty proclaimed Uruguay as a separate state and a buffer between the two countries. Uruguay's first constitution was established in 1830. A civil war ravaged the country, which led to the two-party system of conservatives called the Blancos and liberals called the Colorados during the mid-1800s. The late 1800s in Uruguay was defined by massive immigration and industrialization. The introduction of a railroad in Montevideo spurred on rapid developments in the countryside. In the early 1900s, Uruguay's rich cattle industry brought it into the spotlight as the world faced shortages, most particularly in dairy and beef, due to the two world wars. This helped to enrich the country during its developing stages. In 1973, due to frequent mishandling of the government in relation to the economy, a coup d'etat was initiated by the Uruguayan military. This was different from other forms of military dictatorships, as civil leaders still served as heads of state under a civic military rule. It eventually ended on March 1, 1985. It was defined by the abuse of human rights, a dark time in Uruguayan history. Today, according to the International Trade Union Confederation, Uruguay has become the most advanced country in the Americas in terms of respect for fundamental labor rights, in particular freedom of association. 
the right to collective bargaining, and the right to strike. According to the World Bank, the country of Uruguay has a GDP of $72 billion. The economy of the country is highly export-oriented, particularly in the cattle industry. Its worker population is also highly educated. Over 90% of the population is urbanized, with over half of the current population being based in Montevideo, the country's capital. The backbone of Uruguay's production is its beef and wool industries. In 2018, it produced 589,000 tons of beef. Now that's a lot of meat. Heavy industries in the country also include food processing, electrical machinery, transportation equipment, petroleum products, textiles, chemicals, and beverages. The national flag of Uruguay consists of nine alternating horizontal stripes of blue and white and a white canton with the image of the Sun of May. The nine horizontal stripes represent the nine original departments of the Republic. On the white canton is the golden Sun of May, whose appearance during a major public gathering on May 25, 1810, in Buenos Aires, was taken as a favorable omen for the struggle for independence. The capital of Uruguay is Montevideo, and the country has a land area of 176,000 square kilometers, or 68,000 square miles. It is a relatively small country, smaller than most South American countries to be exact. Topographically, it is made up of rolling hills and verdant plains. To the west is the shoreline, made up of some of the best beaches in the continent. The highest point in Uruguay is located at the Cerro Catedral, or Cathedral Hill, which stands at around 500 meters or 1,700 feet above sea level. Its name comes from the curious rock formations at its summit, which are very common in the southern part of the country. The country has a humid subtropical climate, according to the Köppen climate classification. The average annual temperature for Uruguay is 18 degrees Celsius or 63 degrees Fahrenheit. But temperatures in certain regions can drop to a record negative 4 degrees Celsius or 25 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the case particularly for Artigas. Uruguay has a rich biodiversity. Some of the animals that live in Uruguay include the margay, South American brown brocket, common lizard and neotropical river otter. But due to human expansion, some animal species have started to see their population shrink. Uruguay has a population of 3.4 million people. A majority of them are descended from white settlers from Europe, particularly from Spain and its other colonies, and Italy. They make up around 88% of the population being mainly descended from Spanish peoples who immigrated from mainland Europe, Uruguay's de facto national language is Spanish. However, the Uruguayan version of Spanish is also deeply influenced by the Italian language. Uruguayans are very much known for their secularism and liberalism amongst many other things. They are the leading candidates in terms of development indicators in South America. The median age of Uruguayans is 37 years old, a particularly young working population, more than half of which live in the city of Montevideo. And now, let's talk about some Uruguayan fairs that will make your mouth water. Uruguayan cuisine is a diverse array of varying European tastes. You can call it a fusion of Euro culture. Here are some dishes that you can try when you visit Uruguay. Let's start off with an Uruguayan classic, the chivito. It's a sandwich consisting of a slice of roast beef, veggies, Canadian bacon, cheese, served on a bun. Taking inspiration from Russia, the ensalada rusa will leave you wanting more. Ensalada rusa was created by Lucien Olivier, a Belgian chef of French origin at the Hermitage restaurant in Moscow in the 1860s. It is made with chopped boiled potatoes, carrots, and peas. 
Sometimes it also contains chopped hard-boiled eggs and olives. Of course, we can never leave out empanadas. A classic Latin turnover, it can be made out of any ingredient you can find. Be it beef, chicken, pork. You can even make it with cheese. There is no limit as to what you can put inside, so long as it tastes yummy in the end. While not particularly a large nation, Uruguay is still home to a number of widely known individuals, and here are some of them. First, we have the humble former president, known for living a simple life despite being the highest ranking official in the country, Jose Alberto Pepe Mujica. Next up, for the football fans, we have Diego Martin Forlan Corazzo, who played for Manchester United and is regarded as one of the best forwards of his generation. Jose Carvacio Artigas, national hero of Uruguay, who led a rebellion against the Spanish and helped defend the country from Brazilian and Argentinian interference. Last but not least, the dictator Gregorio Alvarez, who was sentenced to 25 years in prison over the abuse of human rights during his stint as the president of Uruguay from 1981 to 1985. If you enjoyed this video on Uruguay, you'll love this next one.